York Historical Society presents Plague in Gotham, Cholera in 19th Century New York. We're here today in the Luce Center with Stephen Edidin, Curator of American and European Art. The temporary exhibition, Plague in Gotham, Cholera in 19th Century New York, draws from the rich collections of the New York Historical Society and has been co-curated by Stephen Edidin and Joseph Ditta. Stephen, I'm curious as to the way fine art is used throughout the exhibition. It's interesting to see beautiful Duran paintings in an exhibition on cholera, something most of us don't associate with idyllic pastoral scenes. Can you please explain how you've used paintings to explore the history of epidemics? Yes, thanks, Jill. Well, this particular painting by Duran was very interesting because it had just been in an exhibition in the fall of 2007 on Ashby Duran, and the label noted that it was painted in New Jersey in the summer of 1832 after Duran had fled the city because there was a cholera epidemic. City. His colleague and friend who took care of his studio in New York, John Kassler, wrote to him and said that New York was essentially a ghost town. Everybody who fled, that was the wealthy or the well-connected, had gone from the city, and the only people who fled were essentially the poor people. Uh, one who did stay, however, was John Pintar, who was the founder of the New York Historical Society, and he wrote to his daughter about what was going on in the city. This is a portrait of John Pintard, also painted in 1832, the same year as the Duran landscape. Pintard was the founder of the New York Historical Society in 1804. And unlike prior generations of the upper classes, Pintard belonged to a generation who felt it was their civic duty to improve the city, not just to make money. So he supported many educational and charitable organizations in the city. But Pintard was typical also of his class in New York at the time in thinking that somehow the people of the upper classes, the more religious people, the people that led temperate lives were better people and that they wouldn't get these sort of plague epidemics that swept the city like cholera. He felt that the poor people who got the plague deserved it. And that was a very typical sentiment of the time. When this portrait was painted, uh, Pintard held a book to make his uh, seating or stance a little easier for him. And the book that he held was uh, the Bible with commentaries, a very famous commentary called Scott's Commentary. And he's opened it, he told his daughter in a letter, to the 90th Psalm. And the 90th Psalm had commentary by Scott which said that in a time of pestilence, this is a good psalm to read because it talks about the pious man who survives these plagues when thousands of people around him die. And right next to this portrait, we've painted what it was the epicenter of the cholera plague, the place where indeed thousands did die. Five Points was essentially a very filthy neighborhood. It was one that John Pintard despised. But it wasn't the fault of the people that lived there. There was no sanitation pickup in 1832 in New York, and people had to do what they could to keep themselves well. It was an area that became famous for all the pigs that ran loose, because the pigs were not only a source of food for the people, but they were trash removers as well. This particular portrait is interesting because it shows a young boy called doing nothing, a young boy who may have been a messenger or just sitting there, and beyond him in the back is the infamous tombs. This was the great prison that was also in the Five Points area of New York. And the suggestion of this painting is that a young boy who does nothing, who gets into trouble, will probably end up in prison, or Pintard would say, if he caught the plague, he would end up dead. But what is also interesting about this portrait is this is a very determined young man. He's somebody who seems to have courage and to know what he wants to do with life. One of the interesting things about the cholera epidemic is that people thought that it was predetermined, that you would get it for certain reasons. And one of the reasons you could get it was if you were excitable. This young man doesn't seem excitable at all. He seems as stern as John Pintard. And why should he get it? Well, the reason he got it, if at all, was because he was poor, because he had no way to escape the disease when it came to his neighborhood. Now, of course, one of the other things was that, of course, 
course. Diseases like cholera knew no bounds, and people all over the city got cholera. It's interesting to look at this Asher B. Duran portrait of a boy chasing a pig, which looks like a delightful country scene. It was painted for um, Lumen Reed's gallery, which is part of his private home in a very nice area of the city, closer to the ports of New York and downtown on the west end side. But what is interesting about this picture is that it portrays pigs. And of course, there were pigs right outside Newman Reed's doors. The poor people who kept pigs in five points allowed them to roam wherever they could find garbage. And because there was no garbage collecting throughout the city, they went into the nicer neighborhoods as well. And the disease followed. The cholera epidemic of 1832 wasn't really just about the upper class looking down on the lower class. It was also about issues of race and religion. The people that lived in Five Points, for the most part, were African American and recent immigrants, Irish Catholic immigrants. And these two groups were the ones that were essentially despised during that epidemic. This painting of a nun is very, very unusual because, of course, most of the wealthy collectors in the early 19th century were Protestants, and they did not collect Catholic images to a great degree. But this came from Lumen Reed's picture gallery, the same gallery that housed the boy and the pig that we looked at earlier. And the reason for it is because there seemed to be a renewed respect by Protestants for Catholics after the cholera epidemic of 1832. Many Protestant clerics simply left town during the summer of 1832, the height of the epidemic. Many of their congregants had already left. There was no reason for them to stay. But they also didn't feel obligated to help the poor. The Catholic clerics, on the other hand, did. They stayed, many of them died, many of them risked their lives in the process of aiding these poor people, again, many of whom died. And this portrait shows an indication on the part of the Protestant leaders that they understood the risks that these Catholic clergy had taken and they respected them for it.